All right, good morning everyone. Checking in from Phoenix, Arizona. Since our last video at the aero testing in Tucson, Jeannie and I packed up and moved our operation uh, up here to Phoenix and we are doing a little ITU camp. We have uh, some close friends who are ITU athletes and uh, yeah, we're just sharing a house with them and getting some training done here in Phoenix. A Little bit of a different video today, no super epic training. I had a very big brick session yesterday, four and a half hour ride and a 70 minute run off the bike, kind of all around Ironman race pace. And today I'm doing a hard swim, some gym and a very short run. Uh, so we'll walk you through that, but also wanted to take some time in this video to sit down and announce my next race, which is three weeks uh, from Sunday. Today's Friday, so yeah, really coming up quickly. And so I'm gonna announce that in this video, walk you guys through kind of where my head's at, how I'm feeling and uh, what my goals are for the race. And uh, really just enjoying things down here. And uh, we'll see where this video takes us. Morning. How you doing? I'm good. The sun's out today. <laughs> we had a lot of rain yesterday, so but today it's sunny. We got our three-lane YMCA pool. And we've got the ITU guys over there. That's Tyler Smith and Kirsten Casper just being absolute professionals. Just doing their warm-ups and doing their activations. Jeannie and I are just standing here until 9 o'clock. <laughs> until we can get in. <laughs> but we're learning from them. It's good. I'm so good at pretending Keep on smiling in my tiny bubble like a movie without ending Spending time like it was going backwards This is covering my walls but they fall down Diving deeper than the books that we read recovery day I honestly had no idea what I was talking about because I just had probably my hardest swim of the week it was like uh, 3.6 K main set with eight 150s VO2 max <laughs> with like pretty strong swimming in between so that was tough and uh, after a six hour day yesterday body was tired but just did my best and uh, yeah thankfully now we get a little bit of rest for the remainder of the day and I think in this Ironman training like you just got to keep keep showing up as I say and like keep knocking down the workouts they're not all gonna feel amazing but the work still has to get done and uh, it's getting done nicely so on to uh, on to the next thing here Jeannie's finishing up oh yeah probably coffee time we're back from the swim <laughs> what do we got oh, here oh man <laughs> look at that and the My dogs <laughs> the dogs are getting into it <laughs> all on. right yeah thanks guys <laughs> matt and person really smashed it <laughs> Woo. actually we really need to come that way i was thinking about my head position this morning yeah, quite a lot yeah, yeah you were you were kind of like, like this is what peak high performance nutrition looks like <laughs> 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 absolute peak human performance <laughs> All right, we're back from the swim. We're all we're all sugared up. We're caffeinated. A little family gym session slash. This is Matt's gym session, I think. <laughs> he just has to wrestle Reggie. Mobility. Yeah, he's get. You're getting mobile there. <laughs> all right, before the gym session starts, we got to get warmed up. All right, we're out here in the garden, getting a uh, at-home gym session in. I've probably been doing a little bit more at-home gym session while on this camp. Like, we have brought a lot of stuff. Got some weights here, got some sliders over there, a little foam roller, more weights and bands over there. Even brought our little physio ball. And I'm going to the gym like once a week and knocking out a pretty solid lift there. But yeah, when you're doing this Ironman training, like efficiency is the key. You know, you just gotta get the sessions in and get recovered as much as possible. So we're making it happen. I've got. Genie's weight vest on for some farmer's carries just trying to weight it up as much as possible but yeah we're getting the work done any uh, any which way we can all right 
Gym session done. Swim done this morning. Last session for the day. Lawnmower guy's doing his thing. And uh, we're doing a micro run. So this is kind of a new thing for my plan. It's like very, very short uh, 15 minute runs. Like, yeah, a couple times a week, they're like maintenance runs and I'll do my key sessions kind of in between that. So it's kind of a sneaky way to just get the frequency in, which I quite like. I like to just get that that feeling in um, of getting a little run in, you know, most days during the week, but you're not really taxing the body. So yeah, just gonna do this run and then get some lunch. And then uh, I've got a massage this afternoon. So yeah, this has been a pretty nice day. Definitely more on the on the recovery side of things, but you gotta take these recovery days as seriously as you take the, the hard days. That's just, that's how it goes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're out on the trails. Ugh. Hop in one fence. No big deal. Don't tell anybody. All right, that's uh, that's run done. Two miles, uh, 2.06 miles, 724 minute mile average, and uh, yeah, 15 minutes. So they don't all have to be big sessions, just for context, like yesterday I did 11 and a half miles at 6.10 pace off a four and a half hour hard ride. Today, super short run, and then tomorrow, 21 miler. So all about just kind of stacking up the days and uh, getting the body to, to feel good. and. We're counting down the days to uh, to race day here, so just about uh, stacking them up and knocking them down, following the plan. All right, so if you've made it this far in the video to the interview portion, thank you. Uh, I would say this is the most important part of the video because I do have some thoughts on my mind that I need to get across to the audience, things that I've been thinking about quite in depth. I think the first thing that I need to announce right now is what race I'm doing because I've been a little bit of a tease on Strava and other social media. What am I doing? What am I training for? I've been training very hard for a, quite a long period of time, and I'm preparing for Ironman New Zealand, which is just over three weeks away. And so this has been a race that's always been on my bucket list. I'm going into my 11th year as a pro, and it's one of those things where it's time for me to just do things that, I, that really motivate me and things that I'm excited by. Um, and I'll elaborate a little bit more upon that um, specifically. You know, at the end of 2023, a lot of you saw on this channel that I was at a pretty much all time low. Racing wise, life wise, happiness wise, I still was dealing with some, you know, lingering injury stuff going on. My body just wasn't feeling right. My mind wasn't following. And I just really felt like I was at a stalemate where nothing was going well. And so Indian Wells being a really tough performance um, was challenging, obviously, but it opened up a lot of doors for me to think critically and make a lot of changes. Some of that stuff was in my life. You know, Jeannie and I, we packed up our house and chose to go on the road, which we've, you know, been super stoked with that decision because we're so much happier here, um, just being in the sun and, and getting in good training. And then additionally, there was all this pressure to win, self-imposed, all of this pressure to perform from sponsors, somewhat self-imposed, somewhat exteriorly um, exposed, imposed upon me. And overall, I think like that race allowed me to recalibrate and recheck in with myself and think about what am I doing? And I think there were also a couple things that happened. A, I turned 30 years old last year. B, I've been racing professionally for a decade. So when you have those two things sort of happen to you, they're pretty big milestone and life events. And the big thing that I came to the realization of was that time moves so quickly. And I don't need to explain that to anyone here. You pick up your head and next thing you know, like 10 years are gone. And I, I feel like I've really enjoyed my first 10 years as a professional, but I want to make sure that I'm really um, prioritizing every single day because a professional athlete's career is it's got there's a finite deadline. I don't know when that's going to be. I still feel like I've got tons of runway left, but I know there will come a day where I can't do this anymore. And there's no room for me to be unhappy and there's no room for me to do things I don't want to do. So I had that really <laughs> hardcore realization after Indian Wells. And since then, what I've been prioritizing is my mental health, my relationships, my friendships, 
and doing what I love the most, which is going out there and training my butt off. So I've been doing that pretty much since Indian Wells. Um, so it's been, yeah, what, you know, about 10 weeks of pretty much just, yeah, smashing training, really kind of um, honing in on, and on why I love this sport. And one of the main things that I've been thinking about pretty much every day is that the hard parts, those are the good parts. I think somewhere along the line, like I got so distracted by all of the exterior stuff that I was trying to shy away from the things that were difficult. Maybe that was because I was dealing with some more difficult things in, in my life that were not sport related. So I was trying to find the easy way out, whether it was in training or racing. But now that things are a little bit more um, fluid in my life and I'm, I'm in a happier spot and in a better spot mentally, I can really focus on dialing in my training and pushing myself to the absolute limit. So whenever it gets hard in training, I just like, I challenge that quit and I try to like go one more step. Um, and so that, yeah, the two things that I was, I was struggling with was, was going hard in training. And, and, um, the other thing was I didn't feel very motivated at the end of 2023. And I hinted at this in an Instagram story a couple weeks ago, but I think I got into this little bit of a rut where I was saying to myself, Oh, I'm not motivated. I'm not motivated to get out the door. And sometimes that is the truth, um, but you don't necessarily need to be motivated to take action and get out, out there for a training session. So that was one thing I just said to myself, action can precede motivation. And I just got my butt out the door and I just started training. And then when you start having days where you just keep stacking them up, you get that momentum and that's what brings you the motivation. And now I, I wake up every day just like so excited to train and try to push myself to a new limit. Um, so anyways, I, I hope that you can tell that I'm in a better spot and that I'm feeling really excited for Ironman New Zealand. I've put a lot of work into this, but I don't feel this insurmountable pressure to go out there and try and win the race or try and get on the podium or try and get a Kona slot or try to get a big sponsor bonus or whatever. Like all of that external stuff, it's not going to change my life anymore. I'm, I'm happy here. I'm happy with Jeannie. I'm happy with Millie. I'm happy you know, meeting new friends and having new experiences and getting the opportunity to travel and live this lifestyle for however much longer that I can. I hope it's another 10 years and I'm, I'm hopefully halfway through the book that is, um, you know, the, the life of Justin Metzler as a professional triathlete. Um, but I'm going to take every single page from uh, here on forward with incredible gratitude. And I really appreciate everyone who's watching this video and everyone that follows me and supports me. We'll catch you later. Peace.